guys. Welcome to How to Increase Your Frame Rate in All Points Bulletin. Um, I've seen a lot of posts on the forums about people who have not been able to get like anything more than 15 or 20 frames out of their game. I even saw somebody post in the suggestion box to please allow APB to run an 800 by 600. And I was just like, you can't even look at the UI at that size. So I decided to show some people, or to show you guys specifically, what the APB compatibility file is for. So um, I don't have more than 10 minutes here, thanks to YouTube. So I wanted to make sure that you guys had an idea of what exactly this was and how to play with it. So if you were to open up your APB folder, click over here. If you were to traverse to um, APB game configuration, APB compat, INI. This is your compatibility. This pretty much is a list of known compatibilities with um, every video card that there is. I'm not going to go into much detail. I'm pretty much going to tell you exactly what you need to know to get your frames up and running. Um, so, uh, first things first, in APB, there's that, uh, when there's that video card option, right? So if you go to your video settings, you go with that slider from minimum to maximum, and there's five notches you can knock the slider to. So um, each knot is represented in this file, actually, as a bucket. So if you were to search for bucket, that, that, that is not bucket. If you were to search for bucket, you see app compact bucket one. This is pretty much your minimum graphic settings. There's a second notch down here, third, fourth, and then your fifth notch. Those are the prettiest settings. So I'm going to go back up uh, to our lowest possible settings, and I'm going to show you guys what you can do to get your you know game running quicker than ever and looking like complete dog doo doo. So static decals. Um, this is safe to turn to false as long as long as this. I would suggest leaving static to true, setting your dynamic decals to false. Dynamic decals are like bullet holes and sprays and things. Um, level particles, you can set that to false. Level particles are like steam rising off of chimneys, things like that. Um, dynamic lights, definitely need to set that stuff to false. Dynamic shadows, false. If you want frames, you need to take this stuff off. Dynamic shadows are um, shadows drawn from dynamic lights, and dynamic lights are lights that affect your character and physical objects around the room. Blob shadows are like the shadow at your feet, that circular blob underneath cars and things. You can turn that off if you really want to. It won't up that many frames. Light environment shadows are pretty much also dynamic lights, um, minus the dynamic part. They light the level around you, uh, like bus stations and things. Um, you can keep that off. Directional light maps, um, I think, are baked, so they won't raise you any frames. All this you can keep off. This is pretty intensive stuff. Um, you can turn off the quality bloom, but leave the true bloom. Because regular bloom, uh, if you turn that off, makes the game look really dark and just horribly nasty. Um, but the quality bloom is like the halo and stuff around people. So distortion, you keep that off. A lot of this stuff, you definitely want to keep these on because they draw like trees and leaves and things around you. Uh, you can set this to true. Do, 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 do. Um, floating point render targets, I do think you can set that to false, but then you'll completely lose the effect of like chrome and shiny materials on cars and things. Um, Trilinear, you can knock that to false. That's just a means of uh, coming up with your... Uh, it's a means of, of filtering the textures in the distance. Um, never set direct 3D to true, that'll crash your game. Enable high poly characters, you can set that to false as well. Um, that's pretty much the end editor view of your character uh, in game, so obviously you want lower things. You can set these shadow resolutions down even lower, like 256, and set the minimum ridiculously tiny. And of course, in the first place, you've been turning off dynamic shadows anyways, so if you were to leave those on, you can tune them here. Um, shadow fade resolution is like the distance with which the shadows will draw. You don't need to change those that much. 
minimum or maximum dynamic shadows is a great way to increase your frames if you decided to leave that on. You can knock that to like 10 or 1 or nothing if you really wanted to. That way it won't draw any shadows at all. Um, I don't think changing some render quality is going to change a whole lot here. A lot of this stuff is a little bit different. Um, it's pretty complicated. I think this is like the resolution with which custom material shows on your character. Um, I've never really played with it. I never really cared to. These are your character's um, actual texture res. If you want to drop the quality of your character, you can do that by cutting these in half. Uh, all of them, preferably. Especially if there's... Um, the diffuse is pretty much their like paint. You want to keep the width and height um, all constrained. The normal map is their you know detail, the bump map. The uh, eyelashes are obviously eyelashes. You know that just adds a couple polys. It doesn't give you that many more frames. Um, you can set all this stuff. Make sure that you have this stuff matching if you're going to change it. Uh, vehicle level of detail, you might be able to knock that to one if you want really crappy looking cars. Uh, there's not a whole lot else to this before you start getting to the other compatibility bucket. If you want to run all these low graphics and still keep on that um, nice, you know, aching red health HUD that's actually rather useful, you can set this one to true. But um, it might drop your frames when you die, but does it really matter? I mean, you're already dead. You know, I almost forgot, um, when you're all done with your file, be sure to save as, and make sure it's a, you set that to all file, and it's a .ini file right here. Um, some people's computers won't let them overwrite the original compat file, so you can pretty much drop it onto your desktop, save it there, and then for whatever stinky reason, you can move over APB compat right into your file and replace it. Personally, I don't need to, but that's how to do it. Um, when you decide to run APB, be sure to go through your binaries folder and launch the game from its application. If you use the launcher, it'll overwrite what you just edited and make sure that it's all in sync. So be sure to launch the game from the launcher. You can even create that as a shortcut, you know. Have fun. See you guys later.